Okay, welcome to uh, lesson two on the brake rotor. Last lesson, we completed the majority of the outside shape with one, two, three major cylinders. We put the wheel studs on, we removed this circular section here. The goal for this lesson is to hollow out the inside of the brake rotor and then to also put these cooling vents uh, into the rotor themselves. Let's uh, first of all turn our attention down here to the inside of the brake rotor. You can see the with this uh, half sectional view, so, uh, well, this AA is not correct, it should be there and there, but anyway, this side of the brake rotor front view shows us the outside, this half sectional view shows us the inside, and we can see clearly that the cylinder um, that is the furthest to the bottom, I suppose, has a distance from the bottom of 15 millimeters from there to there. And if the edge of the cylinder here is this one, if we continue that up, we see that this edge and that edge actually line up, which means if we take that right to the top view, they share a common uh, diameter of 155. So the first cylinder is going to be 155 by 15 millimeters deep. We then see there's a change in the size of the hollowing out and it drops down to this size here. So we project that up to the top view. We can see a hidden detail line here representing that edge, and that's a diameter of 134. And it's a depth from the very beginning of 30 or another 15. And then we see a hole going through the center. So we take that up, project that up, and we can see it's this hole here, which is a diameter of 45. So there's three holes to put in, one, two, three. The second thing to do is to look at the details surrounding these vents or these cooling vents that are or cooling, no, they are cooling vents that go through the brake rotor. The vents are there to prevent the rotor from getting uh, overly hot. Uh, a brake rotor works only on friction. Uh, when there's too much friction, too much heat, they could get so hot that they can actually boil the hydraulic fluid in your brake line and the brakes fail. So these vents are very important. So if we have a look here, we can see that there are, I think if I counted all those vents up, there's actually 22 vents. And the distance from one side of the vent to the other is 13.5. Over here on the left-hand side, we have detail B. There it is there. It's enlarged over here, and it shows us that uh, from the bottom of the brake rotor, we have a distance of 6.5, and then the vents actually start, and then they go a distance, what's that, 7 millimeters, and then another 6.5 on top. So let's first of all do these three cylinders and then we'll come back to the vents and then last of all we'll do this little indent here as well. Okay, so back to uh, Fusion, um, to the brake rotor tutorial 2, oops there it is there. And the first thing we'll do is to flip the whole thing over and we're going to put in the first cylinder on the bottom. Sketching on the surface as we always do and C for circle, find the center. And this first center was a distance of 155. Stop the sketch and maybe revolve it back. And then E for extrude, select that. And we're gonna pull it into the object a distance of 15. So I'm gonna go the opposite direction and change that to negative 15. Make sure it says cut and click OK. I think that's correct, 155. Mm, I'm not too sure whether I've got my sizes right. Let's go back and check. Outside diameter there and there, bring it up. Yep, no, that's correct, 155. All right, back to my drawing. Uh, now let's create the second cylinder, so on this next surface. So I'm going to rotate things around a bit. I'm going to choose this next internal surface here. Um, Oh, actually, I'm going to do the outside surface. I'm going to choose this one because the distance is 30 from there to the very bottom. doesn't really matter which sketch you draw this on, I suppose. There, sketch, and the next diameter down is 134. So let's C for circle. And 134. Let's stop the sketch. And let's select that sketch, E for extrude. I'm going to drag it back in there, distance of 30 millimeters. Now that's 30 millimeters from the bottom. If you had made that sketch on the next cylinder up, it would obviously be 15. And cut and OK. 
Last one to do then is the hole through the center of diameter of 45 or 46. There it is there, 45. So on here, sketch again, C for circle, 45 it is. Oh, not that one. Uh, try that again, 45. Stop the sketch and let's extrude that out through the top. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, that's starting to come together. That's good. All right, so now let's put these vents um, going through here. All right, so what we're going to do is create another sketch, but we really want to create that sketch uh, out here tangent to the edge of the cylinder. So what I'm going to do is just go back to home view, so this sort of spins it back into its correct orientation. And then I'm going to show you how we can put a work plane at a tangent to a surface. And then we'll use that work plane to draw a sketch on it. So go to your construct uh, icon and then scroll down until you find work plane uh, tangent. Or are oh, you? have lost it. There it is there, tangent plane. So this is going to be a, a plane that touches the edge of the cylinder on its curved surface but doesn't cut it and we can set the angle from the other surface. I'll show what I mean by a second. Tangent plane, select the cylindrical surface. Doesn't matter where you select it, but you'll see here that it actually then gives us an option to be at an angle to a reference plane. So it's chosen that face as the cylindrical face. If you click reference plane, and then I was to select, ooh, where did those other ones go? Can't quite see my original planes there now. And if I turn that off, what is, no, that's interesting. It's not letting me snap to that. Well, okay. Well, I'm going to take a punt here. I'm going to guess that that's actually made it parallel to that plane there, which is a bit weird, but anyway, and click OK. You can see there that this surface is now tangential to that plane. We're going to select that surface. We're going to sketch onto that surface now the shape that we need to make for the vents. So I'm going to zoom in here. That's my center. That's my center going through the whole object. So I need to draw a rectangle roughly, what was it? I think it was 13.5 long by 7 high. So uh, R for rectangle. And I'm going to draw it so it starts top left, finishes bottom right, like so. The height was 7. Hit tab for the next one, 13.5. And then hit enter. Now you can see it's not in the correct position. So now we're going to do some dimensions to pull that back to the correct position. So D for dimension. Click this line, then click the center. And drag down. Now... We need to know half of 13.5. That's pretty simple. You can type 13.5 forward slash 2. Hit the enter key and it does the calculation for you. The other dimension we need to know is the distance from the bottom edge to the bottom of our object, which from our drawing said it was 6.5. So D for dimension, bottom edge, bottom edge, and 6.5. And if all that's going according to plan, we've now got the profile for the vent in the correct position. Stop the sketch, go to 3D. We're going to extrude that sketch and we're going to pull it back through the object. Um, it doesn't really matter as long as it protrudes past there like so. So it's cutting through that bottom layer, I suppose. Okay, you can see that. All right. And yes, we do want to cut. We click OK. Right out. now it's time to pattern that extrusion just like we patterned the studs here before. So let's start by going to the pattern tool, create pattern circular. Let's select the object or the feature and you can see it's, it's pre -heal. If I bring the cursor over it, it highlights it. It then stores it as the object. We now want to um, check an axis or select an axis that we can pattern this around. So click on the collector here. There's the center of the axis there. I hope it's going to select it for me, which it did. And it defaulted once again to just three patterns. Now, I think I said before, 
that's actually 22 uh, patterns which looks about right over there type I don't know what suppress means but anyway we'll keep going and okay to that and now we've got 22 patterns of those vents back to our drawing the last thing to do is to create this small recess here so if we were to look on our uh, diameters here we can see that the outside diameter was 250 and the inside diameter of this surface here is 244 so the distance from the edge of this internal to this edge here um, is a distance of difference what's that six millimeters so that's going to be three millimeters over its radius so the distance from there to there is going to be three millimeters so three millimeters by there we're going to draw a rectangle and then revolve it around okay to do that back to here we're going to do a similar process as we did before we're going to choose a sketch to go on a work plane through the center so this is like an orientate that again so i'm going to choose this center work plane in here if i can it doesn't matter which one i choose really as long as it's going through the center there it is there now i'm going to draw a rectangle over here on the um, side i can do it either side doesn't really matter i'm going to zoom in on the right hand side and i probably do need some reference points so what i might do is use my project tool once again project and i'm going to select this top edge here one and the bottom edge click ok and then i'm going to draw a line down here to represent the very outside of the profile that we're drawing so l for line click once twice so that's the very furthest extent so that's it's like uh, i suppose if it was going to be there in position so now we need to draw a rectangle that's three millimeters in and also lines up with these two edges here so uh, r for rectangle now i wonder if i can bring this across no it's not going to do it all right so what i'm going to do is just snap to here roundabout click once and i'm going to type in the distance of seven tab and the thickness of three and then return and the last thing i need to do is just make sure this is correctly dimensioned from this top edge to this top here so d for dimension once there twice there drag it out that needs to be 6.5 exactly and stop the sketch back to 3d now where's that sketch gone there it is there you can see it you can select that we can just go to revolve first doesn't really matter we're going to revolve that around so click on revolve you see if i selected it then it becomes the profile automatically click on the axis where's the axis there it is there and it revolves around and it defaults to cut it's gone full all the way around we click ok and happy days all right let's quickly go back and see if there's anything we missed and somewhere on here it should talk about rounds here we go all rounds and fillets are one millimeter so wherever we have uh, horizontal surfaces meeting vertical surfaces is in this corner with a round one outside two three four five six seven uh, on the inside here, eight nine ten eleven so basically where we have a horizontal and a vertical meeting on the cylindrical surfaces we want to put a one mil round so we could do that i won't do them all for you it's be boring but i'm going to choose this edge i'm going to hold down i think command i think you do do more than one one two three i won't do that one four five six seven hold down shift spin it around it's getting a bit confusing hold down command again eight internal one nine another internal another internal another internal i think i've got them all hold down shift spin it back and now I come up to our rounds which i always forget where it is there it is there it's in fillet and it's a one millimeter round and put that information in there 
and click OK. So we've now got the rounds applied to all those surfaces, internal and external. Rounds and fillets. OK, hit save. And I think we're just about done. One last check. Vents are in. That shape's done. Studs are on. That shape's there. We've got the hole through the center. I think we're ready to now move to the next stage of designing your mayoral wing.